to you in peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I'm so glad to be with you this morning. Uh, very glad, in fact. I've got a few announcements that I want to make, and then I'm going to continue talking about the fruit of the Spirit. I'm going to talk about peace as one of the fruit of the Spirit uh, this morning. Uh, tonight, you should join us in the West parking lot uh, if you feel comfortable and able uh, for our parking lot worship. West parking lot that we're going to do uh, now that we won't have it next week, but we'll have it the week after again. Please come. Uh, uh, the ones that we've had have been really uh, wonderful, and it's been so good to see people, and I know that others have appreciated getting to see one another as well. So please come as you're able. Uh, next Wednesday, you will not see me on a, on a Wednesday devotional because I'll be on vacation. And um, just so you know, the following week will be the last uh, Wednesday that I'll be doing a devotional, a half an hour, or however long I do this devotional. That'll be the last one because we've got to move into a new phase where we're kind of preparing for what's what's to come. We'll continue to uh, record and broadcast worship, and we hope that you'll join us there. Um, your smart team is hard at work. They are hard at work, and. I think we're going to meet one more time, not next Monday, but the Monday after. And at that point, we should have a plan sort of in place that then we'll uh, get out to the congregation so that they know. And we're kind of planning on a soft open just to see how it goes and what kinks we need to work out on Sunday, August 9th. There will be a sign up. There will have to be a sign up for that. So please be aware of that, and we'll keep you posted in terms of how to do that. We still have a little time between now and then. So please be aware uh, of that. Uh, also, I invite your prayers for me. I'm having uh, some medical uh, issues, and I'll have an ultrasound this Friday to make sure that what's going on is my gallbladder. Uh, some of you have had uh, uh, experience with that and have dealt with that, so I invite um, your prayers and your good thoughts in these uh, in these days ahead. I'm sure there are about 5,000 other announcements that I could make, that, but I'm not going to make them today. Instead, I'm going to get right to Scripture. From the end of the fifth chapter of Paul's letter to the Galatians. By contrast, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against such things. And those who belong to Christ, Jesus, have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live by the Spirit, let us also be guided by the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, competing against one another, envying one another. Because we live in the Spirit, let us not uh, because we live by the Spirit, let us also be guided by the Spirit. And so the Spirit comes to us in things like love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, gentleness, generosity, self-control, and so forth. Today, I want to talk about peace. I talked about joy last week. In the week before my dad died, our pastor came to the house to give him communion. I was already a pastor, but I was not my dad's pastor, and I was really glad to have another pastor in the house who could deal with my dad, and my mom, too. And if my mom's watching this, 
she can just roll her eyes. But he came to the house and he asked my dad this question. Gary, what do you think heaven will be like when you get there? And my dad thought about it for a minute, and then he said this, there'll be complete peace. And the pastor said, what do you mean by that? And my dad said, there'll be no fighting and no arguing and no struggles and no misunderstandings and no hurt and no pain. There'll be nothing. It'll be peaceful. When we read these words from the Apostle Paul, I imagine that's also how we understand peace. The absence of struggle, of strife, the absence of uh, uh, wind and waves, the absence of difficulty and suffering and struggle in our lives. It makes sense on a certain level that we would think that because, right, uh, um, who doesn't want that? A life where there is no suffering, where there is no struggle, where there is no uh, fighting or misunderstanding or gossip or other forms of Pain that have been offered one another um, out of our own pain and struggle. But what if I were to tell you that this is not what Paul means by uh, peace and why it's such a good word for us uh, to focus on today. And to get there, I want to bring you to another passage of scripture in Mark 4, where the disciples and Jesus are in the boat, and uh, Jesus falls asleep in the stern of the, in the, what's the front of the boat? The bow, but is that the stern? I don't know. No, bow, in the front of the boat. He's in the front of the boat, and he's sleeping. Um, and uh, the disciples wake him because the wind and the waves have, have, uh, sort of began to capsize the boat and scared the living daylights out of the disciples. For a long time, I read this story in this way. I thought that when Jesus stood up, stretched, and then said, peace, he was speaking to the waves. <coughs> Excuse me. But what if he weren't speaking to the waves. Yes, it is true that in that word, the wind and the waves ceased. But what if instead Jesus was speaking to the disciples? What if he was calling the disciples to return to their inner sense of peace? Well, you might look at that story and think, they have no idea what peace is in the midst of everything. And maybe that's a little bit how we feel too when everything feels uncertain and topsy-turvy. We don't know what peace means or what it looks like. However, the peace that Jesus gives is a peace that comes not in the absence of struggle, but in the midst of it, in the middle of it. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, the psalmist says, I fear no evil, for you are with me. What brings peace in the midst of struggles isn't their absence, but the promise again that Jesus is with us through all things, in all things, as we struggle to make sense of what's going on around us, as we struggle with the possibility that the future is not going to look the way that it has in the past, as we struggle to figure out what the future holds at all, or maybe even the present will hold at all. Jesus promise to be with us is what brings complete and utter peace. Now I say this because when Paul
Paul talks about the fruit of the Spirit, he's not telling his disciples to pull themselves up by their bootstraps and just change their understanding of things. Because Jesus understand, because Paul, <laughs> the apostle, and Jesus understand that struggles are going to come. And certainly the apostle Paul has his a whole host of stories related to that. And maybe you do too, times where things have not gone well or grief that has filled you because of the death of a loved one or um, maybe you've lost your work in this uh, economy that uh, continues to struggle along a bit in some ways. Um, it's hard in those instances to pretend to be cheery, happy, full of peace and joy. Yesterday I was part of a group that was interviewing a student who is in the midst of their seminary education and uh, he reports that his counsel asked him, how are you in all of this? And he said, I'm actually doing pretty well. And everybody was sort of confused about that. Maybe that even confuses you a bit. It certainly did me. I think what he was getting at was the fact that God, um, God's promise of presence in our lives uh, really never ends. God is fully and totally present with us no matter what. And because of that, whether they're wind and waves on the water, whether our job security or otherwise are um, in danger, we are not alone. We have hope because the Spirit is working peace within us. The peace that comes in knowing again that we are loved, that we are forgiven, that we are, um, that Jesus accompanies us and abides with us. The word for spirit in the New Testament uh, actually means uh, to walk alongside. And this is, in fact, what the spirit does, to walk alongside us, to give us Jesus where and how we need him the most. In this time, this is good news. This is good news news. And so I want to invite you to look for um, signs of peace, not the absence of struggle or suffering, but rather an internal audit where you're kind of exploring yourself and exploring um, where and how you've sensed Jesus with you in this time and in, in the midst of it all. And then to offer prayer and thanksgiving to God for his continued living out of that promise in your life, in the lives of your family, of your friends, of those who we know. I'm so grateful to be with you today, and I'm sorry that I won't be with you next Wednesday, but I'll look forward to seeing you two Wednesdays from now. God's grace and peace be with you. Amen.